You're listening to Bizarre Buffet, a podcast of all-you-can-eat weird. I'm your host, Mark Toriello. I'm Jen Wilson. And I'm Mark Bluestein. There'll be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all in private. When we first went in, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Hi. Hey, welcome to another episode. Hi, everyone. Blessings and abundance. My name is Tina Turner. I'm I'm Lana Turner. Lana Turner. I'm Mike Turner, and I'm going to smack the both of you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, eat the cake, anime. Eat the cake. Eat the goddamn cake. It's some good fucking cake. Doing another episode um, on the same evening, but... You're not going to get this till a little bit later. I'm but still wearing the same yep. sequin tank the, top. The same gorgeous sequin tank top. Mark is still wearing his Carrie White prom queen shirt. And Mark Toriello put a vest on. I so put on a leather vest he to did. make it look like he changed looks I and know. we're not filming. You, you would never know. I you know. would just never we're, know it. We're filming this. We are doing two episodes back to back. We are. We certainly are. So and, you just um, listened to Diatlov's Pass. You did. You, our last episode. Episode was Diet Loves Pass, and Jen surprised us with that magnificent. But I was still pissed. I'm still pissed. I'm <laughs> still angry. I did all this research thinking that you two uh, knew I nothing know. about this fucking shit. I and know. then you're like, oh, Diet Loves Pass. I'm like, I, motherfuckers. I, I got really excited thinking Aww. I was going to, like, I don't know. I'm wooed. Don't I worry. I was wooed okay. as well. I'm wooed. See, that's brutal. And you brought up things that I didn't know about. Uh, and that I didn't know either. And our listeners. And our listeners. I'm sure. Th- I'm sure there are plenty of people listening who don't know even one thing mm-hmm. about what you said. And like I told you before, off camera, I was like, I didn't know about 98% of what you told me. So I loved it. You better have. Yeah. Because I put my blood, sweat, tears, and farts. And, and you're shitted and you're farted. <laughs> into all that, of that episode. That's right. And listen, you know when Mark Bluestein leads an episode, it's going to be more raunch and ridiculous. Oh, it's so. definitely going to be raunch and uh, ridiculous. Absolutely. So, so let's, buckle up, ooh. everybody. Ooh. Get on the roller coaster of Me death. and Mark Toriello have no idea. We have no idea. We have no idea. And I think we need to start doing this from now on. We do. I like it. If you like the formatting of knowing that we don't know what each other is doing let us know in the comments down below yeah. and be cute about it yeah T- tell us that you like our faces or tell something tell us that we're cute tell tell me that you want to go on a date with me that's right i'm single she's single beautiful she's a celebrity I'm ready to mingle mm-hmm. that's right be good wow additional clapping yes you hear that overlap yeah that's audio that's technology do we have a question before our topic, Mark? Well, we could, we could do a question, yeah. I suppose. We always do a question. Yeah. I know. I know we should do a question. So I guess my question would be, if you thought that you lived in a haunted house, like legitimately haunted... Now, you're, trust me, you're not going to have any idea of what this story is. I can guarantee like you. Like Conjuring or Amityville type house? Yeah. How do you think you would respond? Like, what do you think your reaction would be? Move the fuck out. Yeah. Do you want my honest? Yeah, of course. I would move the fuck out. It, I, mine would be the opposite, Jens. <laughs> I would move the fuck in and I would try to cash grab and make a story of it, whether I was on TV or I rented it out as like a haunted house. But like, what if your life was in danger? I don't know. I would be, yeah. I would be more concerned about my rent or mortgage because now <laughs> I have a fucking ghost living here rent free. That's yeah, true. That is true. Fuck so, you, ghost. Fucking ghost motherfuckers. Yeah. Pay up. Pay up or get out. Yeah. You're freeloading. No good. Good for nothing. That's my ex-boyfriend. That's that's, <laughs> that's right, unfortunately. All right, kitties. Gather around this perverted campfire because I have some story time. I can't wait. Are you so excited? Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. I don't have a change of a diaper, so like I'm just warning you. So this story don't shit next to me, Mark. (laughs) Normally normally I have blue steam next to me, but tonight I have Toriello. Let's be real, I never poop. I know, but the fact that I have like blue steam directly across from me is even worse. Danger zone, baby. You in the squirt zone. (laughs) 
<laughs> now, I can guarantee you, and you can call me out if this is not true, but I would be willing to place a bet that most of you have not heard this fucking story. And so help me God if you have lashings for everybody. I'm kidding. It's fine. All right. So the story... It's a little fucking out of control. I'm going to tell you ahead of time. So the things you'll hear in this episode. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fucking crazy. Love some out of control shit. This, this shit is like <laughs> 90s thriller. Like Sharon Stone is going to pop Ooh. out. Glenn wow. Close is going to boil your family Fatal fucking attraction, rabbit. Fatal attraction. Single oh, white yeah. female. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Only like that, but more fucking dark and demented. So this story... It centers around two sisters. Their names are Annie and Jessica Andrews, and they were living in their childhood home in Pepperill, Massachusetts. Never heard of it, but it has pepper in the name, so that's cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> the year was 1986 when, very sadly, and this is a sad thing, their mother passed away. Aww. I know, it's sad. Now, upon the passing of their mother, the two girls were spending a lot of time on their own, You know, pretty much taking care of themselves because, you know, their dad had to take on more roles being a single parent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with being a single parent and them being on their own a lot. What are their ages? If you don't um, mind me asking. No, not at all. Annie was 15. And I know Jessica... I think she was a little bit younger. I'm not exactly like sure. 13, yeah, yeah, they were they were very close in okay. age. So they so, were like young teenagers. Exactly. At this point, uh, the family's grieving and Annie who's 15, you know, trying to keep herself going and move past the tragic loss of her mother, she starts chatting with a boy. By the name of Danny. Ah, oh, Danny. Or so we would hope, mm. right? Oh, oh, Danny boy. Oh, the pipes, pipes the pipes. pipes well, you're going to you're gonna learn why that's a really funny reference. You just wait. Oh, just shit. Wait. Did I just I, make a random reference? You made a random reference that actually is going to make sense to you later. So, Danny, 15-year-old, and Danny. So... The story goes that Danny said he got Annie's number from a friend and that they went to, that he went to another high school. So as time and phone calls progressed, like any teen, Annie was starting to fall for Danny. So like eventually after all the back and forth, you know, the time to meet one another was soon approaching. And Danny had asked Annie, if she'd like to go get ice cream with him, which she was all about. Aww. Ice cream. Ice Lieutenant cream. Lieutenant Dan. Ice, ice cream. cream. Ice cream. You scream. We all scream for her. Mm-hmm. Danny cream. How yes. innocent. Ice cream. I know. It was 1986. So. Oh. Ice cream and back to the future. Fuck yeah. So now picture it, I wrote. Picture it. The moment has come. The bell rings. Annie nearly rips that door off the hinges and then, oh, fucking shit. Now, I'm going to reference the show Catfish here because this is what ends up happening to Annie. Turns out, yeah, Danny was embellishing, you know, a little bit over the phone. I'm guessing you had to be more open-minded in 86 because, you know, no smartphones. so. So reluctantly... Annie still chooses to entertain the ice cream date. It's an awkward situation. I'm not sure that I personally would have, you know, entertained it myself. What do you guys think? Mm, it depends. That's Wait, true. so basically they were speaking on the phone with each other. But they never met? They never met? Yeah, they had never okay. met. And, and he claimed that he got her phone number from a friend. But so what, like, did he just randomly call her and be like, Hi, oh, yeah, my friend, uh, give me your phone number. Pretty, we're going to yeah. talk. Exactly. And this was like before the internet oh, existed. Yeah, exactly. I mean, or if it did, or I don't know, the first Apple computer that was literally a fucking paperweight probably. Mm. Um, so here we are, right? We're on this ice cream date. Annie, she's already fucking over it because the obvious aspect of Danny lying about his appearance, but he was also like a little off, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was, it was a combination of things that wasn't working and Annie was like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. This ain't working for me. We're going to fast forward, and assuming that would be the last encounter she would have with Danny, she puts him out of her mind. That's that weird situation 
they don't talk to each other from that point on. So mm. basically, it was just like a bad catfish date. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. It was just like a bad catfish date. She was essentially being polite or to try to avoid awkwardness, maybe. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, all right, I'm going to do this. Everyone's been there at some point in time, I'm sure, or at least most people. Maybe she right. just wanted the ice cream. Yeah. I'm all right. Now, we're a very bizarre podcast. We love bizarre things. Let's talk about Ouija boards for a moment. Okay. And we're switching it all up on you. You know, most kids and adults alike have dabbled in the spooky occult pastime, right? Trying to conjure either, like, your great-grandma Gladys or Satan. Of course. You know, the We've usual. We've all done it. We've all been there, done that. We all have. You know, someone's mom has probably yelled at them at some point in time, you're going to conjure demons or something like that. Anyway, so as we've already learned, Annie and her family have suffered this great loss. It's not entirely common that the two teens still being heartbroken from this loss would try to maybe communicate with their mother, like via Ouija board. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to communicate with their mother, who passed recently, you know, for some answers or whatever it is. Shortly after the seance... Things started getting more strange around the house almost immediately. So now, do you guys have any idea of, like, where this might be going or no? I'm not sure yet. They started hearing knocking sounds in the walls, like, through the home in different places, thinking, oh, wow, mom might be trying to tell us something. You know, they believed at this point that their mother was trying to communicate with them. Oh, don't tell me Danny, like, snuck in and was, like, stalking no no you gotta wait till the end there's so many weird oh. things here that you would never imagine they started hearing all these noises believing that it was the mom trying to communicate with them but the noises just kept progressing and getting worse at this point like fucking frightening even multiple taps at once in succession just like a lot of like bam, 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 you know like fucking mm -hmm. out of control so here's the issue now. No one is believing the girls, including their father, because they've discussed this with him. And they were like, listen, this is what's going on. Like, we think it might be mom or we have a ghost from the Ouija board. And the dad is pretty much chalking it up to residual stress, wanting to believe essentially. These are methods of coping. And the dad himself never actually heard any of these taps himself because he was working more and mm. had more things to do, as we discuss. Now, the noises continued for the girls, but seemingly... They were only happening when the dad wasn't home. The lights would go on and off. Things would be moved. Typical haunting jazz, you mm -hmm. know? Typical fucking haunting jazz, what you would expect. So it doesn't sound too different from other haunting stories you've heard. So it's been established that the girls aren't making any traction with their dad, believing that the experiences and... By all accounts, he hasn't heard any of what they've been experiencing. No. What can he do, I guess? However, all of the banging and clanging continues as they're home by themselves. On one occasion, they braved going down to the basement because there was a particular amount of ruckus coming from there. As they explore the basement, they discover on one of the walls, there's writing. Oh, and the writing is in some kind of red something. I'm assuming it's supposed to be blood or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And it said, I'm in your room. Come find me. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, How <laughs> weird. I know. This sounds like a, like a scary story that we would tell at sleepover parties. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just wait. Naturally, at this point, Annie and Jessica, they call their father. He rushes home because now there's like, you know, this fucking writing on the wall. The cop who arrived discovered that the writing on the wall was done in ketchup. Oh. Nothing is found to be wrong in the house. But at this point, the dad definitely feels the two sisters are attention seeking or acting out or who knows. Whatever it is, he's not about it. He's like, y'all need to chill the fuck out mm -hmm. at this point. A few weeks after the message on the wall incident, you would guess it that the shit starts happening yet again. The goddamn tapping. Like, I would be so annoyed. I would be so annoyed because it stopped after the first writing for a little while. Then it started up yeah. again. Annie and Jessica decide to follow the tapping sound yet again, and this time it's coming from upstairs as opposed to below in the basement. As the sisters approach up the stairs, they discover another message, and this time written on a mirror in that same goddamn ketchup, I'm assuming. Oh 
that reads, I'm back, come find me. I w- I don't I don't fucking know what I would do. But catch up. I mean, that's what the cops said it was from the first writing. I don't know if there's any like clear cut documentation mm. of the catch up writing or not. I wonder if it was like in a bottle and they like use the bottle. Yeah. Or with their fingers. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think the, the sisters fingers. are doing it at this point or I don't know. Or do you think it's a haunting? Or? I don't know. I want to know about Danny though. So keep going. All right. Well, I want Danny to come Danny back. might just yeah. be a nice ice cream boy, who knows. I'm thinking that there's something with the father. Yeah. Because he is never there when this shit's going on. Mm-hmm. Maybe the father had something to do with the mother's death. Maybe. Oh, wait. Maybe the mother's not dead and she's catfishing. Are you guys loving this right now? Oh, I, my God. Just keep going. Yeah, keep going. This is, I know. This is really intriguing. Just keep oh, yeah. going. All right. Stop asking us questions. I, no, listen. It's intriguing. We're, we're doing he just keeps like. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments oh down below. Oh, my God. Just go on with <laughs> right. the story. I want to know. The story. I want to so, know. Mark and Jen are so excited. I love it. Maybe the right. ketchup is really mustard. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they dyed the mustard. Maybe bread. it's menstrual blood. <laughs> Might be. <It laughs> they just, wrote it with a tampon. You're gonna have to wait to find out, aren't <laughs> sorry. you? That was. No, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry there, um, tampon advocates. All right, so in the process of this new and disturbing event, Dad gets back home. I'm not sure that this dude knew what to think at this point but clearly there's an issue at this fucking house that's not going away so daddy goes in to investigate just what the fuck is going on now with these girls and all this shit and the ketchup and everything else you know so the real discovery would prove to be an actual thriller nightmare of a fucking shit show situation you have no idea Stop oh. telling us we have no idea and just fucking Listen, tell us. Yeah. Listen, cliffhangers. Getting angry. Cliffhanger. Now you're getting us anxious and angry. Come cliffhangers, on. Cliffhangers, baby. <laughs> All the TVs were on, like, maximum volume. and it's When the a, dad got home? Yeah. And it's his first time feeling as though there could be another issue for real. So this was his first instance of feeling like something was actually happening. Because up until this point... He was just not convinced that any of this was real or whatever it was. As we know, the dad's in the house investigating at this point, just walking through to see if he can find anything. As he approaches one of the rooms to look around, he's greeted by a figure in a white wedding gown with its back facing him. Oh, God. Shut the fuck up. Blonde hair. Now, this fucking goblin in the wedding dress turns around to reveal this insane makeup takes off the wig mind you they have hatchet in their hands oh god so this person he walks in the back is facing him they're in what looks like a wedding gown blonde hair turns around to reveal a hatchet with crazy makeup on and takes the wig off yeah and is takes, it danny i don't know you're gonna have to wait to see what's going on here it could be a ghost still now at this point the figure turns around and after the dad sees the face this figure starts chasing him oh and going after him and the dad's basically screaming running out of the house and he's like we all gotta fucking go we all gotta get the fuck out of here all right just like the imagery the wedding dress crazy makeup and but you said that they took the wig off yeah the person took the wig off and then chased the dad with a hatchet that was in their hands after they took the wig off. Did he, Did the dad recognize the person no. or entity? N- no, he just ran the fuck oh, out of there. Okay, he was bugging. Listen, if I walked into a place and there was a goddamn made-up face with a wig and a wedding dress with a goddamn hatchet or an axe, I would be the fuck out of there, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you. The dress that was worn was um, the dress of the dead mother's. I was going to guess that. Yeah. Or Vivian Westwood. Now we're moving on. The figure escapes. The dad runs out of the house. They don't know where. Where are the girls? The girls are already out of the house because they were, you know, already scared from like the second message that was in the, in the writing. In the bathroom. Yeah. In the hallway or whatever. So they had been outside and the dad went in to investigate when he was chased out by the crazy person in his wife's wedding dress. Now at this point, Dad's been chased out of the house. The cops are there and they're doing like a thorough sweep of this house. And 
what they just so happen upon is like literally what nightmares are made out of just to say the least so this person in the fucking dress was hiding in a crawl space under the stairs that the police discovered. You remember uh, little Danny, right? Who catfished Annie? Yeah. The ice cream and all. It was him. Oh. Yeah. It was. I knew it. And yeah. you just were like. Well, listen. <laughs> That's part of the Mark mystique. catfished us I know, into thinking the catfish was a different catfish. So it was I Danny. Know. It was Danny. Oh, boy. All right, but we're not fucking done yet. And I'm sure there's a motive to oh, this. Oh, there's more. Yes. So he was literally hiding in the walls at night as the family slept and was out of the house. He had moved the clothing dryer that the family had in the basement. And I guess there was a hole in the wall that he was fucking sleeping in. And the area looked like he was living in the walls of their house for months, according to, like, what the police said. So Um, is, like, Danny arrested and behind bars right now? Um, girl, we haven't gotten to that part of the story yet. You're gonna have to wait and find the fuck out. But they... But... (sighs) (laughs) All right, so we're moving on. Nothing would happen when the dad was home because this fucking goblin could see the dad coming and going from the vents below the steps because he was hiding in the walls, like from the crawl space. So he was basically people under the stairsing it around the house. So he was hiding in different places of the house. Mm-hmm. And like, so he had a place where he slept and then a place where he would access other parts of the house. Like within the walls. What the hell kind of house do they live in where you have enough room? I don't know. Speak to their architect. Oh my God. I want to look this up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to fit my foot through one of our walls. Oh, I know. So, Danny, good old goblin Danny, he was hit with a fucking ton of charges. One being armed assault in a dwelling, breaking and entering malicious injury to a property, as well as armed burglary. He bounced around from a bunch of facilities. He was underage. He was not 18 at the time. So now... His full name is Danny LaPlante. He is behind bars, but the family is like, we just got to fucking move now. We're over it. Like, we know he's behind bars, but let's get out of here. Um, However, now that the Andrews, that's the family's name, um, now that they're done with their awful nightmare, the saga of Danny LaPlante continues. Oh my God, he's so creepy. I know. Everybody look him up. Danny was released to his mother, a $10,000 bond. And I believe what it said was that he was awaiting to be tried as an adult as opposed to being tried as a minor for his crimes against the Andrews family. So it was a weird loophole that would get him free for a little while as he awaited, I guess, his new sentencing. Mm. Now, it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to figure out that, you know, his release was the worst idea ever. Danny was subsequently released to his mother and stepfather while on bond. And Danny targets a family in his neighborhood at this point. One that lives more or less um, directly behind his home with his mom and his stepfather. Now, within weeks of Danny being out on bond, Andrea Gustafson who was pregnant at the time, is murdered along with her two young children. Odd coincidence, maybe, but not likely. And regardless, you know, another fine example of what the fuck. Why would they let an axe-wielding crazy man in a dead woman's wedding dress out on bond anyway? (laughs) But um, I digress. So the cops head over to Danny's house at this point because they know he's supposed to be kept there. He's out of fucking child prison Mm -hmm. or wherever the fuck he's in. In the meantime, at the new crime scene, the Gustafson house, the police noticed a lot of parallels or similarities to the whole Andrews family situation. It's at that point that the police are like, all right, so we got to see what's going on with this Danny because we know he's out of custody. Upon arriving to his house, you know, which is a short walk from the new crime scene, you know, they go in, they want to speak to him, they encounter his mother, he fucking flees the house and runs from his house where he's supposed to be staying. Was he wearing a dress? I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) So, now fucking mind you, the Andrews family, this poor fucking family, they are in the process of packing their shit and getting the fuck out of Massachusetts. However, it's at this point that they weren't entirely moved out and the police had to then inform this poor family that, oh, and by the way, 
be careful because you know that guy that was living in your house oh, in God. the walls he's fucking out of prison and we're scared for you well that's when the police should be present at the house Absol- at all times absolutely i fucking agree Entirely. Our tax dollars pay for that. Mm-hmm. So they should do it. That's right. So, I mean... Dra- Defund the police! Defund the police department. Mm-hmm. That's right. No justice, no peace. All right. So, so we're going to wrap this story up because the most important elements are here. But the police end up getting various tips when Danny fleed the scene. And he was apprehended about eight miles from his home at a lumber yard. The Andrews family went unharmed a second time, thankfully. And it was said that he was laughing maniacally as they fucking captured this turd goblin. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Now, Danny LaPlatte was convicted on first-degree murder for each member of the murdered Gustafson family. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Guess they learned the hard way with this one. Mm. This is what my note says. (laughs) Wow. Insensitive and weird, but how do you like it? So is he still alive? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jen did some I just research did some in the meantime. Deep dive. Yeah. He's still alive. He's in prison. Yeah. He looks like a creep. Yeah. What do you think? That's so weird. That's really weird. I don't know. How does one get into your fucking house <laughs> and then hide <laughs> and then yeah. hide under the 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 stairs and then in the cross like how does one get in well, there i want to see this shit happen in a trailer park um never i mean you like would you would have to live in a fucking like big house mm-hmm. like a nice ass big old house well, it kind yeah. of like it kind of makes me think about the episode we did on cabrini green mm-hmm. oh where, yeah like going through like the the, the walls yeah, yeah the bathroom mirrors yeah what i find interesting is that there's this perfect timing right the death of the mom and then the ouija board and then all of these like quote unquote supernatural occurrences happened i wonder if he was in the walls or spying on them while they did the ouija board i'm pretty sure he was and that is more creepy than any kind of ghost how fucked up is that right and i think you are a million percent correct because the ouija board did not take place till after the ice cream mm-hmm. meetup where he clearly felt a certain kind of way of you know the poor girl being like oh by the way you lied to me about almost everything i'm the fuck out of here you're lucky i even entertained you for a second yeah so he felt a certain kind of way about that right so i'm assuming he probably moved his fucking wild ass into that house soon after and he was most definitely you know spying on them and the funny thing is is that they were playing with the ouija board in the basement and if you recall he oh. was sleeping in the basement right in a hole mm. behind their clothing dryer so that was his main hub he would only disperse throughout the house through another access point under the stairs right. to fuck with them and to create the haunting. So he most definitely was there when they were doing that. And another, that's just a whole other twisted fucking yeah. element. Like you were so creative. I know, very creative for sure, but you're Wait, so fucked up. Did he actually know one of the, Anne, was it the, yeah, the daughter? Annie. Did he know Annie's friend or was that made up? That, I, I'm, I'm 90% sure that's made up. I remember, I feel like I saw something that said that he actually went to her school and he was known now don't quote me on this everybody mm-hmm. because this is what my brain is telling me i cannot confirm it for you but if you know let us know i'm pretty sure that he actually went to her school and that's how he knew her so the so what the friend dream. i know so the friend connection <laughs> oh i'm from another school was like bullshit entirely but he was living in that house but did he live at home too? Is it like I'm I mean that's not clarified. There might be other articles. This is just from one source that right. I used. I would love to see people interview these killers and ask them exactly how it was done because I think yeah. that's really fascinating and interesting. It is. And I mean, 
you know, there might be footage of him being interviewed. There mm-hmm. could be. I'm not entirely sure of its presence or not. But, you know, a lot of times these people are just such fucking narcissists that they're like, I'll never tell you because I yeah. don't have to. You oh, know, I'm powerful. Oh, oh. see, I'm powerful. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, um, I mean, how just that to me is just such a creepy story for so many reasons. Dress. The, the dress, the wig, the war paint, as it was quoted, face makeup the axe wielding i mean it's just a fucking shit show of a nightmare (laughs) like for fuck's sake Uh, can you imagine what do you put on a dating profile if you're this dad looking to meet a new wife one day oh and by the way an axe wielding psycho lived in the walls of my house for a while i mean i would be like marry me but still but that's so off-putting like i don't know what the fuck i would do if i saw that like i know i And it was just such an, I know, such an opportunistic, I think, attack for so many reasons because the kid was aware that the dad was never there, mostly never there. Mm -hmm. So he capitalized on the father taking on all this additional stress of like, okay, now I got to pick up these 20 other things that, you know, my wife did and now they're mine on top of my existing 20 things. So he was usually never there. And this fucker had a vantage point like where he would be stationed he could see the dad coming and going and that's why the noises and the shit and like mm. the crazy disturbances would happen when he wasn't there that's so, so weird just to like invalidate the kids when they would tell him like these things are happening and he'd be like really i don't hear shit a message to the parents of the 80s listen to your children that's right end of today haven't you watched nightmare on elm street that's right kristen Kristen, get away from that house on delay. Yeah. Mark, I love this. Oh, good I'm so topic. Glad. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Thank this you. was a good one. Thank you. And um, so I guess at this point, if we have no further questions from the class, we should say. Follow us on Instagram That's at right. Bizarre Buffet. And That's on right. Facebook and at on Bizarre Facebook. Buffet. That's right. And let us know if any of you have heard this story before or Diet Love's past. You know, we're, we're very curious to know what your yeah. take is. And, um, we do have some recommendations for topics we have not forgotten about you guys. Um, I think one was from Bree. Um, yes. I think we had another one maybe from Sam. I so believe so. We will definitely visit those at some point in time. And please uh, subscribe yes. to our podcast. Absolutely. Um, Apple, and, Spotify, Stitcher. And then it really helps if you leave a review and it's it also helpful yeah, for please. us. Yeah. Just like it, and just a little review. Nothing crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy. I mean, you can comment on our stunning beauty, but you can also just say something nice and give a star rating, and um, it helps us a lot, you know? So, until next time, my name is um, Axe-Wielding Dead Woman Stress. I'm Daniel LaPlante. I love it. Hi, Danny. And I am the ice cream that (sighs) Daniel LaPlante put his tongue into. That's kind of beautiful. That's a really beautiful (laughs) That's charming. I love it. I'm the dryer. On the dryer. (laughs) I'm the dryer that concealed the hole that he was hiding in and terrorizing this poor family that had a terrible loss. All right. Well, goodbye. Bye. Bye.